You can still talk. But get out of the frame, right? <laughs> no, you don't have to be out of the frame. Is it on here? Mm -hmm. You guys can talk. <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, now that everybody's arriving, it is time to ring the bell. send out your light and your truth that they may lead us and bring us unto your holy hill and to your dwelling. As we stand, let us sing our opening hymn, number 414, God my King, thy might confessing, verses 1, 5, and 6.
God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. Ms. Kim, what do you have for us to help us to praise God with our bodies as well as our mouths <laughs> and our hearts? Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's good to see everybody. Hope you're enjoying it out here and as well online. Hello to all the kids. Hello, kids owners out there. Hello to my grandchildren that are out there too. So anyway, um, with the pandemic, I mean, it's on the news. My gosh, we have a pandemic and we get a hurricane in the water, which is a tropical storm. And we kind of wonder what in the world is going on. <clears throat> but we can just remember that no matter what, God sees it all and he is on our side. And this is a little Calypso. Don't be now, it's a great big world. Where do I go? How do I fit in? I gotta keep this one thing on. Come to the waters, and you that have no money, 
Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read selected lines from Psalm 145, breaking at the half verse. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and great grace. The Lord is loving to everyone. And his compassion is over all sorts. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are happy. Eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord. And you give them their food in new season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every creation. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. Call and call upon his name. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him. For he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn today is a setting called Bread for the World. And it, I will be the cantor, and I will sing the refrain the first time, and then I ask that the people join in in the refrain uh, thereafter. And then I will sing the verses. <laughs> Oh, 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces 12 baskets full and those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Heavenly Father, we rarely feel as though we are adequate or have enough for the task at hand. And yet we know that you have sent to us the bread of life, who is the bread for the whole world. Help us to feed upon him that bread, and also to become the bread that others may feed upon in Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Bring them here to me. That's what Jesus said to his disciples out in the open meadow by the seashore that day. All these people had heard where Jesus was and came running to him looking for ministry and healing. Thousands of them. And near the end of the day, the disciples, being logistically minded and rather tired themselves, suggested that Jesus send them away before darkness came and the shops closed so that people could go and buy food for themselves. But instead of sending them away, Jesus did exactly the opposite. Bring them here to me. That's all Jesus ever really asks us to do. Not to fix things, not to manage the details of people's lives. Just bring them to him. And that means for us to be open to people because the Jesus in us needs to be present to people. The monks like to put it as a priority in their day-to-day -day chores and prayers to have a willingness to be interrupted because it is in the interruptions that much Jesus work gets done. Once in seminary, Kim reminded me of this, once in seminary, our very first year, we had a neighbor and a classmate who lived a few doors down from us and Thanksgiving was coming and I said, and his name was Wayne, Wayne Theus. And so his name sounds like the Greek word for God and he used to always introduce himself and say, I'm God, Wayne God, that is. Well, that's just a little side point. But I said to Wayne, we became friends and I said, Wayne, Thanksgiving's coming, we'd love to invite you over to come to our house. For Thanksgiving, let's share that day together. And so the next day in chapel, toward the end, we always had announcements, and Wayne stood up and he said, It's my pleasure to be able to announce to you that the Huffs have invited us all to come to their house for Thanksgiving. And I blanched. 
And, you know, we didn't have cell phones back then because I <laughs> called Kim and I said, Kimmy, 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 we're, we're in trouble. <laughs> but instead, I braced myself and when I got home from class, walked in the door and I said, well, the funniest thing happened in chapel this morning. <laughs> I said, Wayne has invited the entire seminary to our house for Thanksgiving. Now, Kim loves to entertain, but she did not feel as though she was adequate. But she searched in her heart and she said, well, let them come. And they did come. And you know what? There was more than enough. And we had a blast that Thanksgiving day. It was not the dysfunction that you always have to tolerate when families get together for that. <laughs> it was a beautiful, wonderful day of budding friendships. It was really terrific, but we certainly didn't expect it. You know, part of our mission statement at St. George's is to invite and welcome everyone, no exceptions, into Jesus' presence. And this pandemic is forcing us to learn how to invite and welcome in new ways and safely. But one thing has happened that was not happening before. We now have people who attend our services online from Tennessee, Ohio, Florida, Missouri, Louisiana, North Carolina. We even have someone who watches us from Athens, Greece. Hello, Costas, if you're online today. Of course, for him, it would be about 3 a.m., I guess. <laughs> Maybe he watches the recorded version. I want to remind you that these Sunday morning services are always available to people. So one of the simplest ways that you can invite people into Christ's presence in this place is simply to make them aware of it. I've heard that you can even have such a thing as a Facebook Live watch party now. Invite people to come and watch and then, you know, make cutting remarks about the sermon if you want to, <laughs> to entertain yourself. I mean, that's what I would do. <laughs> I'm sure the disciples had no idea that Jesus was going to feed all those people directly from his own hand that day. But they did exactly what he asked of them. They brought the people to him. And that's when he acted in a most profound way. A fellow named Peter Woods in his blog called The Listening Hermit. I love that title of the blog, The Listening Hermit. He wrote this, his name is Peter Woods. He wrote, the primary miracle as I read it from the demands and exhaustion of pastoral ministry is that a human being endangered by a headhunting king, I'll explain that in a minute, in grief over John's death, exhausted by an itinerant ministry, can find the compassion in the midst of all this to care about healing and feeding those needy crowds. This was not just some vacation that the, Jesus and the disciples had been looking for when they left the crowds to go to a deserted place, as the scriptures tell us. Jesus had just been told by some of John the Baptist's disciples that King Herod had just beheaded him after holding him in prison. This was a time of grief for them, and they needed time alone to process the realities of their mission, to assess the risks that were before them, to get some rest, to rest up for the coming journey, and to seek the heart of God. And that's what we're called to do, often as we can. You give them something to eat. Jesus told them, and they went. We got nothing. I mean, they reached in their pockets and pulled out maybe a little paper clip and a piece of lint. They got nothing. <laughs> over and over in life, we stand in the shoes of the disciples in this very passage, surrounded by human need, faced with challenges, knowing that we don't have the resources in our wisdom, in our wealth, in our strength to meet the need to stand up to those challenges. But the irony is that those disciples and we disciples have the bread of life himself. He is more than they needed. Twelve baskets full, in fact. How often do we
we, when managing our budgets, forget that we serve a God of great abundance who will provide all, all that we need and more if we follow the mandate to bring the people to Jesus. And so Jesus said, bring them to me. You and I have this bread of life right within us. When we're lacking, Jesus within us brings abundance. We see a lot of broken people these days on the front lines in the hospitals, overwhelmed and beyond exhausted. They're in tears. They're discouraged that they cannot save all who come. And they keep coming. And they keep serving. At great risk of their lives. The abundance in them is in their going on. Exhausted as they are, their tears of care flowing with tremendous abundance is what fuels them. Sometimes all we have are tears. I told you before about the little old Russian lady named Nellie Pavlik who spent time in a Russian gulag came to Jesus when somebody slipped a portion of a page of scripture into her cell. And with a little shaft of light, she read upon it, words of life. And she gave her life to Jesus on that spot. And she was a remarkable woman. And she said always at the end of every talk she ever gave, and just remember, no tears, no Holy Spirit. And what that means for us is that when you are crying, whether it is tears of joy, tears of grief, tears of frustration, whatever it is, that is the Holy Spirit bringing comfort and strengthening your life for the steps ahead that you have. Tears are an evidence of the Holy Spirit working in you and me. A major point in this story I don't want us to miss is this. We must never forget that our greatest priority is to teach people to feed upon Jesus. You and I may give out of all our strength. We may reach into our pockets and find nothing to give. But just like Peter said to the beggar one day, silver and gold, I don't have any of that. But this one thing I do have, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Jesus is the bread that the world needs. It says in here something that jumps out. The actions of Jesus with the two fish and the five loaves. It says Jesus took, he blessed, he broke, and he gave. Those are the very Eucharistic actions that Father Jeff is going to read in our prayers at the altar today, remembering that at the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread, he broke the bread, he placed it, blessed God for it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. He did it here in this passage. He did it at the Last Supper. He did it on the cross when he was taken, broken, given, and blessed by the Father for the world. And he did it after his resurrection in that little inn on the road to Emmaus with two of his disciples, taking, blessing, breaking, and giving. These are the marks of Jesus. And when you and I are broken, we stand as he did and offer him of ourselves for the world. It says he had compassion for them and cured their sick. These people had searched for Jesus. They followed him on foot. You can feel and sense the desperation. Came from around the surrounding towns. He went intentionally for rest with his disciples to a deserted place. But they followed him because they needed so deeply. You know, Kim and I love to get away at times. We go to a place called Morris Island or the Sandy Point. Many of you have seen the photographs of it. We just can't believe the beauty of it, so we share it with everybody. But these days, the islands aren't so desolate. I've read that they can't keep power boats in stock right now because everybody's trying to find a place to go that's safe. These islands are not desolate. 
they are crowded with people who are looking for respite. And then Kim and I will be sitting there enjoying the peace and quiet, and then off in a pontoon boat will pull up to the beach and let off 15 people. It feels like an invasion. Imagine Jesus sitting in a beach chair with his friends and watching a pontoon boat after pontoon boat after pontoon boat disgorging crowds of people onto the beach. I can hear the disciples, well, there goes our private vacation. And they look down the beach to find a spot to get away from the crowds. Is there anywhere we can go? But the people had brought with them their sick and their lame and their blind and their palsy. Lepers come and there are people on stretchers. And it says that Jesus had compassion on them. In another part of Matthew, it says Jesus saw the crowds and had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. By now, the disciples were beyond exhausted, as Jesus should have been. And as the sun has gone low, the disciples, knowing that people would be needing heat, said to Jesus, there's no food out here, it's late. Send everybody away so they can go home and buy food. You know, I know the feeling of relief when crowds finally leave. You know, the motorboats these people own today have these terrific stereo systems on board. And they pull up to the beach with their music blaring in order to overcome the noise of the motor. But then somehow when they pull up on the beach and the motor is off, they leave the music blaring out loud as though they're doing a great favor to the whole beach that we're providing music for you all. And almost invariably, and I don't know why this is, it's country music. <laughs> why is it always country music? You know, I think to myself, and I look at Kim, and she says, shh, shh, because I say it kind of loud. I say, I didn't come out here to nature in order to have twang drilling a hole in my head and harshing my mellow at 10 decibels, constantly assaulting my peace that I came out here to find. So we like to wake them out. We'll sit there almost until dark, when finally the last boat pulls away with their blaring stereo you can once again hear the waves lapping gently at the shore. You can hear the wind and the seabirds that ride upon it. This is what the disciples were craving. Send them away, Jesus. But Jesus said, you don't have to send them away. Bring them here to me. I know Peter looked at John, and John looked at Matthew. And they probably rolled their eyes. But you know the rest of the story. Not only did everyone have enough, it was a feast in the wilderness where there were 12 baskets left over. And I'm sure those disciples were also re-energized by the ministry and the miracle that happened that day. Where they thought that what they needed was peace and quiet and rest. But instead they were energized. Holy Spirit as they were doing ministry. I still believe greatly in self-care. But when God calls you to it, there's no choice but to do. The bread of life came to the wilderness. And Jesus, who is the bread of life, comes to us in our wilderness. Our pandemic affected and flagging economy. Our pandemic imposed hermetically sealed existences where what we really need is human contact beyond the four walls of our rooms. What little you feel you have to offer right now, if you humbly offer whatever that is, like the two fish and the five loaves against so great a crowd, Jesus will bring abundance. And not just for you, but for you to give and to share as you watch in amazement that in Jesus, always have way, way more than you need. Amen. Amen. As I adjust this mask back on my face,
aware of the fact that it usually goes on crooked, and I think that it's because my face is crooked. <laughs> but better to have a crooked face than a crooked heart, right? Please stand with me. And let us sing together this statement of faith down in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in death and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Sandra, Skip, Rome, Len, Jenna Rose, Deacon Bill, Seth, the Reeves family, Reverend Moore, Elaine, Martha B, Jim, Alex, Spencer, Judy, Karen, Joni, Martha S, Glenna, and Debbie, and all others who we name before you now. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your spirit all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we ask all who are affected by this virus be held in your loving care. 
In this time of uncertainty, let us to know what is ours to do. We know you did not cause us suffering, but that you are with us in it and through it. Help us to recognize your presence in acts of kindness, in moments of silence, and in the beauty of the created world. Grant peace and protection to all of humanity for their well-being and for the benefit of the earth. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. No, sir. One family of ours, uh, Julia Stanley and Amanda and Nathan are up in North Carolina today memorializing Nathan's father, I mean Nathan's mother, who just passed away the other day. So uh, we would have had a more full house today were it not for them. Still limiting ourselves to uh, only 10 parishioners in church not including those up here who are doing uh, upfront ministry, uh, just because you can be seated now. Um, just just because the uh, COVID numbers are still rather out of hand, and so we have to take great care. Uh, and we want to create a safe space so that those of you who do want to call into the church office or online at the uh, St. George SC.org, our website. Uh, you can actually sign up for a service during the week, on some Saturdays, and uh, here on Sunday morning. So we're glad for all who can come and receive the body and blood of Christ. Uh, physically, we also want you to remember that your intent and your desire for Holy Communion, uh, and as according to the doctrines of the Church and in the heart of God Himself, is enough to provide you all the benefits of Communion. Father Jeff, do you have anything that you'd like to come before the people? No, I'm good. Uh, a shout out to uh, to John and Wyatt and uh, or Shepherd and River, uh, my our grandkids. Very good. Just on general purpose, no no special thing. Just the, all good. The love of the granddad. <laughs> Would that by any chance have anything to do with the fact that granddads are usually shoved over into the corner and not brought from the center in the lives of their grandchildren? Not that I experience any of that. Of <laughs> anyway, thank you. Shout out. Very good. All right then, um, Father Jeff, I will ask you to please do the bidding to communion. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God.
things come of thee, O Lord. And thy home have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them in all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we now offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. He said, My own peace I give to you. Not as the world gives a greeting, do I give to you peace. So let not your hearts be troubled, and neither be afraid. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn today is hymn number 690, Guide Me, O Thy Great, Thou Great Jehovah, verses 1 and 3.